Hello everyone! Welcome to the first Firebase releases deep dive of 2024. We had a few releases in January that Puff covered in his release notes video. And today, I'll talk in more detail about the documentation for best practices when sending FCM messages at scale. Firebase Cloud Messaging is our messaging solution that lets you reliably send messages to your apps on different platforms. There are two types of messages that you can send to clients, notification messages and data messages and they will be delivered even when the user is not actively using the app. If you want to better understand each message type, take a look at the documentation. I'll leave the link in the description below. Firebase Cloud Messaging is widely used as a messaging service, and that is why the FCM team recently published a set of best practices for sending messages at scale. But before we dive into these best practices, it's important to understand some key terms and concepts. The first concept I want to cover is requests per second, or RPS. It is a metric to describe the rate of incoming requests to FCM. Quota tokens and token buckets. When sending messages using the FCM v1 API, each request consumes what we call a quota token in a given time window. This window is what we call a token bucket. Server-side throttling. When traffic volume exceeds the FCM services capacity, all the requests beyond the serving capacity are rejected. In that case, you may see a narrow response with retry after headers. Exponential backup. When retrying errors, you should add exponential increasing time delays. For example, if you start with a one second delay, the next request should have two seconds of delay, then four seconds, and so on. Alternatively, you can implement exponential backup with jittering, where you choose retry delays through a random process. Now that you know the key terms and concepts, let's talk about the best practices when sending messages at scale. If we look at the FCM servers, we see that the number of API calls look like this. You'll see that we have lots of spikes, and many of these are periodic. To optimize resource usage, we need to reduce those spikes, both their number and their amplitude. The first thing you can do to smooth out these traffic spikes is to use FCM only for appropriate use cases. Many use cases don't require showing a notification or taking an action right away. So you can probably take a different approach here, like scheduling a local task in your app and then display a local notification or take another action when the task triggers. Before sending a notification, be mindful of your quota tokens and ask yourself the following questions. First. Do all of my customers need to receive the same notification all within a one-minute window? Or would a five-minute delivery window still meet my business needs? Second, can my customers be segmented based on priority to smooth over the spikes? And third, can my notifications be scheduled ahead of time? Ideally, you should ramp from zero to the maximum RPS across at least a 60-second window. For higher RPS, consider an even bigger time window. You should also avoid the so-called on-the-hour traffic. That is, avoid sending messages within a two-minute window of each quarter-hour mark. Instead, spread out the message sending over the entire time frame. Implement server-side throttling to monitor and manage the flow of traffic to FCM. If you need to retry sending a request, pay attention to these best practices. If a send request fails for any reason, wait for at least 10 seconds before retrying. Pay attention to the error code. For some errors, you should just abort and do not retry. For some others, like 500, you should retry with exponential backoff. When implementing exponential backoff, set a timeout for dropping requests that are no longer timely. With that, you avoid retrying indefinitely. These best practices will help avoid what we call retry amplification. When failed requests are retried without exponential backoff or jittering, they will accumulate and add to ongoing traffic load, which will amplify traffic congestion problems. The last best practice I want to cover is meant to help you with big changes. When making large-scale traffic changes such as increasing traffic to FCM, shifting traffic across regions or networks, or migrating to a different FCM API version, you should create rollout and rollback plans and make gradual changes instead of rolling the change for 100% of your user base all at once. Rolling out gradually allows you to spot potential problems before the next step up. 
while your rollback plan allows you to prepare mechanisms to quickly and safely recover from unanticipated failures. All these concepts and recommendations are explained in greater detail in the Firebase documentation, so definitely check that out. And that's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of Firebase Releases Deep Dives.